one of the advantages to living in Florida is being able to visit this place anytime we want. If you're a history buff, St. Augustine is the one city you have to put on your Sunshine State bucket list. Established by the Spanish in 1565, this town less than an hour drive south of Jacksonville is the nation's first enduring settlement. It predates Jamestown in Virginia by more than 40 years. Flash forward to the 21st century and it's estimated some 2 million people from all over the world visit St. Augustine every year. They come here for the history, the diverse shopping, the quality food options, and the natural beauty of the bay and the beaches. There's so much to experience here, you might need a little help sorting it all out, knowing where to start, especially if it's your first time. We've put together this list to make it simple for you. 10 things you must do in St. Augustine. As always, be sure to use our website, chadgallivanter.com, as a companion resource to this video. There, we provide helpful links, maps, and other information that will make your trip to St. Augustine a lot easier to plan. Let's get started with the 10 things straight ahead from the First Coast. Set foot on the time-worn streets of St. Augustine and into the earliest surviving example of a planned European community. The distinctive layout is that of a 16th century Spanish colonial town. The architecture of the houses and other buildings help transport you to a different era. A handful of structures remain around town that date to the Spanish colonial period, with newer buildings mimicking the same architectural style. Some of the buildings are open for tours, while others make a good place to spend the night. Other architectural jewels date to the Henry Flagler era, when the tycoon and father of modern Florida constructed three luxury hotels next door to one another. The Casa Monica still functions as a hotel, while the Alcazar houses businesses, offices, and the Leitner Museum. If you want to learn more about Flagler and his influence in St. Augustine, we highly recommend taking one of the legacy tours at Flagler College. And if you want to learn more about the history of St. Augustine in general, download the Florida Stories app to your smartphone. This free app from the Florida Humanities Council will take you on an informative walking tour, telling you about some of the city's popular and lesser known landmarks along the way. One of the most visited attractions on the First Coast is what you see behind me. For more than three centuries, the Castillo de San Marcos has weathered everything from battles and tropical storms to an onslaught of sightseers starting in the early 1900s. The fort is educational and fun, especially when they fire off the cannons. Across the street are other cool attractions like the Pirate and Treasure Museum, the Colonial Quarter, Potter's Wax Museum, and so many others. Around town, you'll find discount booklets like this one, where you can save a buck or two on the city's top attractions and museums. These things are also very helpful in mapping out your day. We have a list of our favorite attractions and things to do in St. Augustine on our website. St. George Street is the city's pedestrian-friendly shopping and dining corridor. Start at the old city gate and work your way southward toward King Street and the plaza. There's a mix of mom and pop as well as chain businesses along this strip, enough to keep you busy the better part of the afternoon. Along the way are a series of booths where you can schedule everything from walking tours to ghost tours that happen after dark.
one thing is for sure, you can count on your sweet tooth acting up when you're here in St. Augustine. We can possibly begin to tell you all the places where you can indulge, but we are going to give you a quick rundown of our top three all-time favorites. Peace Pie stuffs ice cream and pie filling in between a couple of shortbread cookies for a unique take on the ice cream sandwich. May Day is known for its innovative flavors of ice cream and homemade waffle cones and cookies. The sweet treat I can eat any time of the year is a gourmet ice pop from the Hippo. Since the company's founding in 2010, more than 400 flavor combinations have been created, and I've probably tried about a quarter of them. The Hippo never disappoints. What is your favorite sweet treat in St. Augustine? Let us know by dropping a note in the comments. If you like to only eat local when you travel, you won't be disappointed with the options here in St. Augustine. There are budget-friendly spots like Pizza Time, which offers New York-style pies by the slice, to Osteen serving up fried shrimp and fine seafood for more than 50 years. Check out Sarbez for its gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches in a setting every 80s and 90s kid will love. And then there's Fried Chicken Kitchen, making what I believe to be the best chicken tenders in all of Florida from a food truck normally parked on US-1. St. Augustine has one of the most picturesque bayfronts in the nation. Climb the steps onto the bayfront wall for some spectacular views of boats floating on the water as far as the eye can see. Be sure to snap some pics with the big guys at the Bridge of Lions or schedule a boat tour at the marina. Places of worship are some of the most awe-inspiring buildings in town and can be well appreciated from the outside. Most are open to the public for self-guided tours during the day if a service isn't taking place. The Cathedral Basilica, always a favorite with its beautiful interior and stained glass, while the Greek Orthodox National Shrine is one of the most underrated places to see in town. While there's no admission charge, there should be a fee just to see these elaborate frescoes. If you're looking to escape the crowds in the historic district, head to Uptown San Marco. This area north of Ripley's Believe It or Not features one-of-a-kind boutiques, a number of antique shops, stores that focus on home design, colorful coffee shops, and top-notch eateries. This area is also home to popular tourist spots, the Fountain of Youth, and the oldest gel museum. Plus, you'll find the city's Sacred Acre and the Great Cross, a live oak that's believed to be the city's oldest resident and one of the most photographed streets in America, all in Uptown. While most of the attention in St. Augustine is rightfully focused on the history in Old Town, be sure to leave some time to explore the area's beaches. Milano Beach is the closest sand to the historic district and offers low-key fun with a retro vibe. Long stretches of sandy dunes give character to the beaches at Anastasia Island State Park. While St. Augustine Beach is one of the best spots to experience an authentic Florida sunrise in the morning and learn how to surf in the early afternoon. From B&Bs housed in historic properties to brand new hotels designed to look old, there's a variety of quality places to stay in downtown. Because we live about an hour and a half away, Abby and I don't overnight here very often except to stay on special occasions. When we do, it's usually a B&B. &B. But if we were recommending a hotel based on location alone, it would be the one you see behind me. Opened in 2021, the Renaissance St. Augustine Historic Downtown Hotel has exquisite architecture with an interior design that has a bunch of whimsy thrown in for good measure. But what this 89-room hotel really has going for it is its location. The Fort and St. George Street are just to the south, while the hotel marks the start of Uptown San Marco, 
and all of those great locally owned places we mentioned earlier, they're just to the north. While we have never stayed here and you need to do your own research to determine if this hotel is right for you, we know this location can't be beat for some folks. And if Ripley's Believe It or Not is on your agenda, it's just across the street. Does it get any closer than that? That'll do it. Our list of 10 things you must do in St. Augustine. What would you add to the list? Let us know in the comments. Do you enjoy this type of content? We'd love to have you sign up for our free newsletter, Gallivanter 75, where we provide quick tips and photos from some of our favorite places. Sign up now free at our website, chadgallivanter.com. As always, thank you for watching. From Florida's first coast, see you next time.